So good morning guys, welcome along. Thanks very much for joining me on this beautiful autumnal day. And here we are, episode number one of the CB750 build. So here we go folks, CB750 episode one. Now you might be thinking, I know what you're thinking, hold on, I've tuned into a motorcycle channel, watch some motorcycle restoration. Not Alan Titchmarsh, why am I looking at a tree? Well, in fact, this is a very rare and very special tree known as the Honda tree. These are normally only native in Japan, very rare to get one in the UK and very, very rare to get one alive for as long as this one has been. So this has actually spawned all of my Hondas over the years from the 89 CBR 600F to the 99 CBR 600F to the 93 Fireblade and the CB84 CB750F. So if we look closely in here, we can actually see, oh, just see the remnants of a motorcycle tire in there, and a chain and some bits. And again, if we follow around, you can't actually see the bark at the minute, but if you can get access to the bark on one of these, you will see that it has got a big H Honda logo imprinted on it. And there we can see, beneath all this shrubbery, what looks like a CB750F under a cover. So, it's been growing for some time now, since 1984. So we've got to try and dig it out and start this project. Now, unfortunately, this tree has got the standard Honda security system of a wasp's nest, which has been in action for the last six years whilst the bike's been there, and it's kept it secure very, very nicely. Now, I'm a little bit apprehensive about this Honda wasp's nest, um, hence why I've left it to the middle of November to try and get this out. And as you can see, the tree is still quite overgrown, so it's gonna have to be cut back and I don't want to end up in A&E with a load of wasp stings. But, I have a cunning plan. So it appears a little thicker than first anticipated. Time for the chainsaw attachment. Unfortunately, a few more running repairs along the way. As you can see, the wasps have built this metal wire fence in there as well. Double security. So I've had to take all the straw apart, uh, chainsaw even, to get this out of there. Those wasps really are pesky little buggers. So here we are, that seemed to be quite a, quite a good success. A little bit thicker than what I was expecting, but no Japanese wasps in there. So I was pleased with that. I've got changed out of my Alpine Stars PPE. And now we can really see the outline of the motorcycle. We've also got this dry stone wall down here, which seems to have collapsed onto it. So that will be the next thing to remove before hopefully we can wheel the old lady out. So there we go, a little bit later on, a little bit further down the road, we've actually managed to uncover it and get it in the sunshine for the first time in many, many years. Looking a bit sorry, but we're nearly getting it out. I just thought I'd show you guys, as you can see, if left unchecked, these Honda trees will actually start to um, spawn extra appendages like the swinging arm down there. It's a bit like a fungus that grows on a mushroom. If you leave them, then they will just start growing extra appendages off of them. So there's the bike with the swing arm in it. 
and you can see it's grown a new swing arm under the engine there. Come on, pump it up. You got to pump it up. I said, come on, pump it up. You got to pump it up. So we give it a bit of a wash off, get all this crud off in there that's been sat for years, get it in the workshop, give you a proper walk around a bike, talk you around it, talk you around the projects and the bits and pieces we've got to go on it. So we'll see you in there. So here it is, we've got it inside the workshop. Uh, it actually moved quite nice and easy as I removed the brake pads when I stored it outside many years ago. Uh, CB750F, I've dug the logbook out and had a look and it's actually a 1983 model. So 40 years old this year, feels the right time during its midlife crisis to complete this resto mod and get into the project now. So the CB750, first introduced by Honda in 1969, was the first real superbike as such, the first bike to be called a superbike. Uh, the 19, in 1979, the double O Red Cam second gen CB750s came along, which this is one of, say 1983. And I bought this with the intention of always doing a Arresto mod on it. So from the factory in 1983, claimed 77 horsepower, five speed gearbox, and 250 kilograms wet weight. So, a bit of a whopper to move around. So like I say, I always wanted to do a bit of a resto mod with this. Uh, I have looking at it now thinking, shall we just restore it as is? But I'm gonna to stick to the original plan and try and turn it into a, a sort of resto mod replica of the 1981 Freddie Spencer CB750F. So this project, guys, is a real-life project. It's not something that's already been complete with the videos coming out afterwards. It is a real-life project. So please do subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss an episode when it comes out. Um, I'd also like to say that the thumbnail shot is not the finished bike. That is the work of a company called DB Customs over in Canada. Um, if you haven't seen any of his bikes on the website, I'll pop a link in the description. He builds some absolutely incredible resto mod machines. So be sure to check out his website. And that is something that I would like the CB to come out like once it's complete. That kind of attention to detail on his restorations. So let's go through the parts and work out the plan for the bike moving forward. So one of the main parts of the project is to try and install this ZRX 1100 swing arm. So I did have a Honda, um, I think it's a 954 swing arm that I was originally going to put in, but I managed to get hold of this whole rear end from a ZRX 1100. I prefer this because we've got this kind of factory lower bracing on it. We've got the tubular frame, which uh, is in keeping with the tubular frame of the CB. We've got underslung canopy on there. We've got eccentric chain adjuster on it. And we've got the option to run newer and more modern tires on it, given the width of the wheel and the tire. We've also got the mounts for the rear shocks on here already bit less fabrication work, but being a Kawasaki item, obviously the spindle is gonna be different diameter, different length, different spaces, etc., etc. So one of the main parts of the project is to get this old girl fitted into the back of the frame. That's gonna be one of the first jobs, get on the lathe, fabricate up some spaces, take some measurements, and try and get that swing arm fitted in there first. Once we can get the bike with the swing arm and the forks in as a rolling shell, all sort of temporary put together, we can then strip it completely apart, get everything blasted, powder coated, and rebuild the engine whilst we're waiting for all that to go on. So that will be the plan for the project to start with. We've got some XJR 1300 Olin's rear shocks to couple onto the swing arm. Uh, again, we're gonna rebuild these, powder coat the springs black, and hopefully that will give us plenty of damping on the rear of the bike. 
On the front end, we are going for some GSXR 1000 K5 forks. The reason we've gone for the K5 forks really is the black fork legs at the bottom will be in keeping with the black theme across the bottom of the bike. And also, for the ease of fitment, we've actually got a Cognito Moto stem conversion, company out in America, custom company again. This is designed to fit directly into the GSXR yokes and then directly into the CB750 frame. So once we push this stem into these yokes, we should be able to bolt the forks pretty much straight into the bike with these new bearing sets, etc. We will obviously take the forks apart and rebuild them, new seals, new oil, once we know they're in the bike. And they apparently have also got KTEC internals in these forks. So it'd be interesting to see when we start pulling them apart if that's true. So we managed to pick up a quick action throttle, something I just found over the years, slowly collecting these parts. And in this box here, we've got a box of carbs. Unfortunately, not the Makuni RS36s, as it says on the side of the box, but still a lovely set of flat slides. So if we see in here, we've... Oh, for God's sake. I've told her, don't keep her carbs in the carb box. This is for carbotutors. Sorry, guys. Anyway, now we can see we have got a set of VM29SS flat slide GSXR carburetors. So the bike did come with these pod filters on the original CV carbs, but these CV carbs do not like running without the airbox. They're particularly tricky to set up and get to run nice. And they don't sound as cool or look as factory as a set of flat slides. So the plan is to get these flat slides on there with these velocity stacks and make some lovely noise and make it look full factory. The other advantage of these VM29SS is, is that Greta has got no problems. She doesn't have to worry. I have been reliably informed these are Euro 5 compliant, ULES zone and congestion zone compliant. So shouldn't have a problem riding the bike around London once these are on. So these are the parts that I have managed to collect so far over the years. Like I say, the first stage is to try and get the bike as a rolling chassis and get all the geometry set up correctly, all the welding and fab work done. Then we can pull it apart, get it all cleaned and coated whilst we rebuild the engine. What we are looking for moving forward is a front wheel, discs, spacers, spindle, etc., to put in the front end of them GSXR forks to get that into the rolling chassis state. We're going to couple that to a set of M4 Brembo calipers and also couple that to a uh, RCS Brembo master cylinder on some nice Renthal ultra wide flat bars. So Christmas is coming up, you never know, we might be getting some of these bits for Christmas. Uh, we're gonna have this big oil cooler hanging off the front of it as per factory bike, and hopefully something like this Delcovic ceramic coated upswept exhaust going on there as well. So they're the other bits that we need for the bike to keep the project moving forward. Like I say, this is a real life project, real time. Um, if you wanna see this project, try and progress a little bit faster, a little bit sooner. You're more than welcome to start me up a GoFundMe page, or if you wanna have some pictures of my feet in swap for M4 calipers or something like that, just drop me a DM and I'm sure we can sort something out. But in all seriousness, there will be the parts off the bike, the swing arm, basically the whole rear end and the whole front end. If people need bits and pieces off the bike or they've got something they wanna swap or donate to the project, please get in touch. I'm not too proud to be a charity. So thanks for watching, ladies and gents. I really can't wait to get stuck into this project and get on with it. It's been a long time sitting there waiting for me to finally have a bit of an opportunity to get around to doing it, financial and personal. Uh, what a journey. Uh, next episode is going to be a load of measurements. So the wheelbase of the bike, fork heights, uh, yoke offsets, um, rear shock angles, all of them kind of things so that we know when we put all the new kit onto it, it's still gonna handle like a good motorcycle with good geometry. And then we'll probably try and get the rear swing arm out of it and get set about sorting out this uh, ZRX swing arm to go in. So like I say, please subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And we look forward to taking you along. Look after yourselves, ta-ta.